And where does it leave the natives who were part of the coup? You're the sacrificial arm. You're not a United States of America citizen. You're not a Briton. You're not a Belgian. So you die in your own movie. Why? Because you've been woodwinked into doing something stupid. You are welcome to Africa Uncovered YouTube channel. My name is DJ and we really, really appreciate that you take off some time to be part of this channel. We really don't take you for granted. Today we're going to be discussing geopolitics of Africa and most especially we're going to be looking at issues concerning the Democratic Republic of Congo. You can call it DRC. And most especially today we're going to discuss the issue of the three Americans that have been sentenced to death in the DRC. And we're asking ourselves, what is America going to do? On 19th May 2024, there was an attempted coup d'etat in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And this coup was targeting the president of the DRC, Felix Tshisekedi, and his economy minister, Vital Kamehe. Now, the attackers went to both the presidential palace that is called Paris de la Nation and then the home of the Minister of the Economy, Kame Residence, that is not far in Gomba. These assailants were heavily armed and put an intense fight at Kame's home and at the presidential palace, much as they were repelled by the security forces. The coup was foiled quickly by the security forces. The orchestrators of the coup were Christian Malanga, a Congolese native who lived in the United States of America as a political asylee. He had founded and registered a political party, the United Congolese Party, in 2010 and referred to himself as the president and the head of the New Zealand government in exile. And this was proclaimed back in Belgium in uh, 2017. Now, this Christian Malanga in question was part of the people that had attacked the palace. And regrettably, he was one of those people that were killed during the attempt. The coup attempt occurred amid this political crisis that gripped President Felix Tshisekedi's ruling party. The crisis evolved around an election of the leadership of parliament initially slated for May of 2024, but subsequently was deferred. One of the targeted politicians was an ally of Tshisekedi, his finance minister, that was heavily blamed for plunging the country into an economic crisis. And he was also planning to run for presidency of the National Assembly. The fighting was reported in the capital of Chinsasa in the early hours of 19th May at approximately 4.30 p.m. It was reported that men who were dressed in camouflage fatigues holding assault rifles had gotten into a confrontation with the security forces. Much as they managed to enter the palace, they were repelled and some of them were killed and they were about 20 or so in number that attacked the Vital Kamehe and then others were at the palace. Displaying the flags of Zaire, as the country was known during the dictatorship of Mobutu, some of the attackers also wore patches of the U.S. flag. They declared that they wished to see a regime change. Images were circulating on socials showing men in those fatigues armed with AK-47s. Now, let's flash forward to the trials that were recently concluded. Now, according to the BBC Online, 37 people, including three Americans, a Briton, a Belgian, and a Canadian national, have been sentenced to death over an attempt to overthrow the president of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Felix Kishikedi. The men were accused of leading an attack on both the presidential palace and the home of an ally of President Felix Tshisekedi back in May, like we talked about. Christian Malanga, a U.S. national of the Congolese origin, the suspected leader of the plot, was killed during the attack along with other five members. In total, 51 people were tried in a military court 
with hearings broadcast nationwide on TVs and radio. Malanga's son, or the son to the leader of the coup called Marcel, was one of the U.S. citizens sentenced to death. Previously, he had told court that his father had threatened to kill him unless he took part in the coup. His friend, Taylor Somthon, was also given the death penalty. The pair, aged in their 20s, had played football together in Muta. Now, the challenge here is, Malanga's son, Marcel, says that his father had threatened to kill him unless he took part in the coup. Now, that can be understandable. This is your father that you look up to, and, you know, he's on a plot, and he forcefully tells you to be part of it. So, in one way or the other, he could say that he had no way to object. Much as he's not a, a young person, he's not under 18, to say that he could not concede or refuse by himself. I want to believe that is why he continues to be tried. However, when you look at the pictures that were taken during the arrest and the pictures that were taken during the court procession, these people don't show any remorse on their faces. They're in fact smiling. And then you wonder, are they okay with the sentence? Are they welcoming the sentence? Do they know something that the rest of us don't know or they don't mind whatever is going to happen to them? That is perplexing. Because someone being sentenced to death, it could be of anywhere. They can, you know, it can be an injection. It can be by hanging. It can be by shooting. Whichever way they are going to say they're going to die. Because at least it is not going to be, they're not just going to die natural death. They are going to be killed. Now, a court rules out that you're going to be killed, but pictures are taken, you're smiling, left and right, all wide, after the pronunciation of the sentence. That was perplexing. So it leaves so many questions that if you stick to this video, we're going to look at at the end of it. Let's continue with this article. His friend, Taylor Somthon, was also given a death penalty. We're talking about the friend of Malanga's son, Marcel, called Taylor Somthon. He was also given a death penalty. His stepmother Miranda earlier in June had told BBC that the family had a zero idea of how he ended up in the DRC. Of course that's understandable. I mean children who grow up in the US are so much detached from their families in most instances. So I think the guy was out there and then they were plotting whatever they were going to do and they ended up in Africa in the DRC and the family had, had no idea. We were in complete shock as to what was happening and the unknown. Everything we were learning was what we were getting off Google, she said. The third American, Benjamin Zalman Poloon, had business interests with Christian Malanga. Also sentenced to death was Jean Jacques Wondo, a duo Congolese and Belgian citizen. Human Rights Watch previously described him as a prominent researcher on regional politics and security and suggested the evidence connecting him to the coup attempt was thin. The AFP news agency report that the Briton and the Canadian nationals were of Congolese origin. Now, before we even go there, uh, let's look at uh, the, this Jean Jacques Wondo that they are talking about. Human Rights Watch previously described him as a prominent researcher on regional politics and security and suggested that the evidence connecting him to the coup attempt was thin. You see, this is where these reports, these so-called Human Rights Watch propagandists go wrong. They want to think for everyone. They want to presume as though they know everything and, and as though they are gods of knowledge to be knowing everything. Where do they get the evidence that detaches this so-called Wondo from the coup that was carried out in Congo when the Congo authority themselves are very confident that the so-called Jean Jacques Wondo was part of the coup plot. Where does the Human Rights Watch get that evidence to back that there was a thin connection? How did they determine that 
there was a thin connection. Whatever connection that was there is a connection. It doesn't have to be big or thin. All the connections linking everyone to the attempted coup is a connection. The court had the British national Yusuf Ezanji had helped recruit some of the others who took part. Of the 51 tried, 14 people were acquitted and freed, with the court finding them with literally no connection to the attack. Those convicted have five days to appeal against the sentence. So there is room for these people to appeal the sentence, which we don't know if really their appeal can go through after this attempted code. Everyone, literally every security agency in the DRC is looking at them. So there is no, there's literally a very slim chance that their appeal could even be heard. Death sentences have not been carried out in DRC Congo for roughly two decades. Convicts who receive the penalty serve life imprisonment instead. Mark this one. Death sentences have not been carried out in DRC for roughly two decades. Convicts who receive the penalty serve life imprisonment instead. Mm. So, the court martial of the DRC convicted these people and sentenced them to a death penalty. But according to the BBC, the death penalty in the DRC has not been carried out for at least two decades. And people who would receive this penalty would instead serve life imprisonment. Is this going to be the case? I don't think so. Because this was a matter of national security. This was a matter of a coup against the president. And I don't think the security can take it light to say, okay, we've given you a death penalty. Now it is going to be, you're instead going to serve a um, life sentence. There is a difference between a death penalty and a life sentence. And especially when it is a case of this magnitude. So me, I want to believe that unless something is done, like we're going to see, those who are going to stick on this video to see what is likely to happen at the end of it, what we're going to discuss. Unless something is done, me, I see these guys are going to be just killed, either by firing squad or by syringe or by hanging. They cannot let them go scot-free. However, the government lifted this moratorium in March of this year, citing they needed to remove traitors from the nation's dysfunctional army. However, no death penalties have been carried out since. The attempted coup began in the capital, blah, 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 blah. So this is where we are. There are three American nationals. There is a Briton in there and there is a Belgian. How and why they are fighting to remove a legitimate president of an independent country, a sovereign country of the DRC leaves you perplexed. Why? Meaning they were working for somebody who has interests, and that is Malanga, Christian Malanga, using these people. But definitely they also had their own agenda as to why they're fighting. But all people are having their eyes on the DRC. Why? Probably had promised them ministerial posts. Probably had uh, promised them that they're going to mine, you know, minerals the way they want. Probably had promised them heaven and earth. And what has come out of it? Five of them dead, and now the rest being, you know, sentenced to death. 51 people, 51 people being sentenced to death because you want to overthrow a government. However dysfunctional it may be, it is a legitimate government. He was voted into power. And nothing calls for such kind of force. So what's likely to happen? The United States of America is a country known for believing that every American, regardless of who they are, where they are, are important, almost as equal as every other citizen in their country. For as long as you have their papers, whether black or not, okay, there, were, there could be some little bit of parity, but... For as long as you're their citizen, 
regardless of the case, regardless of where, are, where you are, there are tendencies of America not letting go. So what are they likely to go? Here we come. The United States of America is likely to do these things. One, they know that the government in power in the Democratic Republic of Congo is corrupt. And therefore, it is an avenue that they are likely to exploit to corrupt officials to see that these three people, especially of their origin and their citizens, are released unconditionally. They're probably going to get them the best lawyers they can have their hands on. And if that fails, then we are going to see an incident of raid on Entebbe happening in the DRC, where they will probably storm the prison wherever they are going to be and, you know, take out their people. And this can be done as a corrective government, but also it can be done on an individual basis. If in any case, these perpetrators, these three guys in question, the, the American citizens and a Briton and probably a Belgian are highly connected. There are mercenaries everywhere in the United States of America that can be, you know, hired and given that mission to rescue these people from the DRC prisons. That is very much likely. But also, there is a legal battle that could probably be mounted, regardless whether they were wrong, whether they were actually indeed plotting against the government of Tshisekedi or not. There is much likelihood that there will be a prolonged session, prolonged court battle in trying, in an attempt to overturn the court ruling of a death penalty. And also there could be prisoner exchange. If there is anyone in custody in the United States of America from Congo government, maybe they could be exchanged with these guys. The other thing that could be done is to put the government of the DRC on tenterhooks to forcefully and unwillingly release these people. And where does it leave the natives who were part of the coup? You're the sacrificial arm. You're not a United States of America citizen. You're not a Briton. You're not a Belgian. So you die in your own movie. Why? Because you've been woodwinked into doing something stupid. Something stupid like, you know, being, you know, being in possession of AK-47s and then you're attacking a military, you're attacking an army, a special, an elite force that guards the president. That is stupidity of the highest order and the people that are going to regret it are the locals that were woodwinked stupidly to be part of this coup. The son of Christian is not going to suffer because he's an American citizen. We've looked at avenues how they can be freed. The Briton is not going to suffer. The American citizens are not going to suffer. But the stupid Congolese that were woodwinked to be part of this are the ones that are going to face it rough. They are basically going to serve the sentence. So that's what I thought we would discuss today on Africa Uncovered. You know, trying to bring out... The, what is happening in the DRC and the death sentence being aligned for the three American citizens, a Briton and a Belgian, but also other 51 people from the DRC that had attempted to carry out a coup in the DRC back in May on 19th. Otherwise, from me to you, I am TJ. Adios. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe because we are relentlessly going to be giving you information as you deserve to know. Bye-bye.